Praise God for another glorious and wonderful opportunity to talk about the sweetest name in the history of the world, the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Welcome to the Northside Church of Christ, Marriage Enrichment. Come on in the room. Come on in the room. We're glad to see everyone today. We are a little late today. We had a, a funeral service uh, for a beloved member of the Lord's Church. Uh, then I wanted to come on live with you, though. So we're glad that you're with us. Thank you for joining us today. Marriage Enrichment, Northside Church of Christ. Come on in the room. Hunter family, great to see you. Patterson family, great to have you. Uh, Cook family, uh, Jalen Cashel, Bank Banks family, great to have you. Uh, Sharon McClendon and your family, we appreciate you. Come on in the room. Let everybody know that the truth is streaming right now. Elliot family. Uh, we're great, great to see you down, and uh, we're great to see you with us. Uh, we're congratulate, we're, we congratulate you, and we celebrate with brother and sister Elliot, newborn, beautiful baby, addition to the family. Uh, Lewis family, thank you so much. Uh, Nisha, God bless you. And we're so glad that everyone is joining us today. Uh, to start your watch parties, tell a friend, tell a neighbor that the truth is streaming right now. Like, subscribe, share. If you care, you will share uh, because we are uh, we are in the business of saving souls and helping souls stay saved. That's our mission at the Northside Church of Christ. And we are glad to come to you today uh, and talk about the good word of the Lord. Tiffany Payne, great to have you. Thank you for being such a great top fan and uh, joining us. Uh, Johnson family, Miami is here. Miami is here. Uh, Hallandale Beach is here. Lee family, we appreciate you. Uh, keep spreading the word. Keep sharing. Tag someone. Uh, start your watch parties. Like, subscribe, share. Uh, and we're just glad that you're with us today. We're going to John chapter 2, the gospel according to John chapter 2, as we look at God's holy and everlasting word uh, for our marriage enrichment today. Noble family, great to see you with us. Holden family, mom and dad, God bless you. Keep, uh, come on in the room. Come to the word of God today. We're going to go to the word of the Lord. Let us go to the Lord in a word of prayer. Dear God, we honor you. We thank you. We are so grateful for this blessed opportunity to speak on the behalf of King Jesus. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for guiding us. Thank you for the scriptures, which are a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. We come to you, dear Lord, praying, dear Master, for all the married couples. We pray for their lives, their strength. We pray for their joy, their peace, their power. We pray, dear God, that uh, everyone will obey Jesus. And we pray in particularly at this time for all of the married couples uh, for better communication, better union, better strength, better devotion to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and to one another. Thank you for your word. Thank you for this opportunity to speak that which is written. We pray for your guidance. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Great to have you. Uh, great to see you. Holding family. Lee family. Appreciate you. Fuller family. Uh, Malik and your family. Kelly Bryant. Bryant family. God bless you. We love you. Gainesville, Montgomery, by way of Montgomery, Alabama. Absolutely. Uh, we're praying for you and your wonderful family. And uh, we're thankful for the the fellowship down through the years. Give the family our love. We're going to the word. John chapter 2. Marriage and rich men. All are invited. He invited. Thank you for joining us. Clark family. Uh, all are invited today. God's word is right. Uh, uh, Ryan Benneby. Doctor. Great to have you sir. Uh, great to have you. Thanks for joining us. We're going to the word today. John chapter 2. God, we get, we're just giving you a short uh, message today, a short uh, lesson today on, on Facebook Live. Family, we appreciate you for tuning in. Uh, hear the word of the Lord, John chapter 2, and the Bible says in verse 1, and the third day there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there, and both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. Both Jesus was called and his disciples to the the marriage and our subject just for a few minutes is invite Jesus to the marriage, invite Jesus to the marriage. And it's important 
for all those who are looking to be married one day and those who are married right now, that you invite Jesus into the marriage, whether it's a, a marriage that's coming up in the future or a marriage that's happening right now. Invite Jesus into the marriage. Here in John chapter 2, the scripture says the third day there was a marriage in, the Can in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there, and both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. Many times people invite Jesus to the ceremony, but not to the matrimony. And it's good to invite the Lord to the ceremony, but the Lord needs to be included in the matrimony. The ceremony is one day. The matrimony is a lifetime. So we need Jesus in the marriage. And some sometimes, why do I say this? Because sometimes in marriage, members uh, uh, who are, or people who are married, husbands sometimes say the wife needs to change and do this. Wives sometimes say the husband needs to change and do that. Very often there, from what I am seeing, especially during this COVID-19 uh, pandemic, many people are getting frustrated. Many people are upset. Uh, some people are doing great, but some people are getting upset and, you know, having, whether you want to call it cabin fever or overexposure to one another or whatever. Uh, and depend, And many people are basing their joy on the other person. It's that person's responsibility to give me joy, to give me peace, to make me feel good about myself and to encourage me, to uplift me. Well, I want to stop you right there. If you invite Jesus into the marriage, if you keep Jesus in between the husband and the wife, then you get all your strength from Jesus. You get all your joy from Jesus. You get all your power from the Lord Jesus. It's, it's important you, you heard, uh, some men of you heard my wife and I last week, how uh, we talked about his needs, her needs. And we believe in that. We believe in the fact that there are needs that the husband has and there are needs that the wife has. Uh, there are needs that the husband has and there are needs that the wife has. And uh, we were talking about the book, His Needs, uh, His Needs, Her Needs, a very, uh, very important book that we are marching through and we're walking through. And last week we talked about the fact that she needs, uh, uh, she needs affection. And we were talking about the fact that he needs respect. He needs reverence. He need, he has a need to be revered and respected by his wife. A man needs that. And I, I must say, I must put this in here. I hope no one gets offended. But if you do, you can call me and we can have a Bible study about it. No problem. Uh, just join the club. Uh, but, but I have to say this, uh, a black man really needs some uh, respect because as you can see in our world today, in our world down through the years, we have uh, had little to no uh, respect when we go out into the world, but it me it really feeds a man's spirit that he has respect in his home. And I'm here to tell you, wives need affection. She deserves affection. She deserves uh, you to be affectionate to her without it leading somewhere. Uh, but but she needs affection. He needs respect. Now, both I'm sure both sides would say many times the husband needs affection and sometimes the wife, many times uh, the wife needs respect and they both deserve that. But those are some primary needs in a general sense in a relationship. But but and all those are good. We, they are, you've heard us many times on our live uh, on, when we go live and we talk about husbands and wives and responsibilities to one another. But today, I want to just just really uh, give you a, a short lesson, a message to show that even more so than the husband needing the wife to do something or the wife needing the husband to do something, we need to put Jesus more in our marriage. We need to, each husband, each wife, right now, during this coronavirus pandemic, and as there's so much attention on COVID-19, and there's so much attention on race, race relations, uh, there needs to be a focus on Jesus. I believe in all, I believe in working for a better future, and standing up in justice, and I believe in health, I believe in you know, uh, you know, protecting ourselves physically, emotionally, mentally, but but in the marriage, I, I'm seeing too many people that are sad and mad and angry and depressed because the spouse is not doing right. I love 
my spouse. We have a great relationship. We have a great marriage, but, but, but we both will tell you that uh, all of my joy is not centered on her and all of her joy is not centered on me. You've got to have a relationship with Christ for yourself. And in our, in our marriage counseling, many times we talk to the couples, uh, premarital counseling and marriage counseling. We talk to the couples. We try to incorporate Jesus in the middle. If Jesus is in the middle, even when you have problems, both of you can call out to the Lord. Uh, many of the members at Northside, they know me. They know what I teach about, about having a focus on the Lord. Jesus, uh, as a Christian, you've got to have Jesus number one in your life. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Seek first Jesus. But you see, guess what? The devil wouldn't mind your spouse to be first. The devil wouldn't mind your husband to be before Jesus. The devil wouldn't mind your wife before Jesus. You know why? The devil wants anything in front of Jesus in your life. The devil wants anything, anybody ahead of Jesus Christ in your life. And don't give the devil permission to put someone ahead of Jesus. So regardless, um, you know, of how the other person is doing or feeling or, or if they're upset, you know, you got to have joy in and of yourself. Uh, the members at Northside know me. I, I would say a lot of times during the sermons uh, before everything closed down, you know, I enjoy spending time by myself, just me and Jesus. Uh, I, I could go out to lunch with myself, go to the uh, movies by myself and buy some popcorn and have the popcorn, uh, you know, and watch the movie. I can go to dinner by myself and just uh, tell myself some jokes and laugh at my own jokes, you know, and study the word and and talk to God and in and, and prayer and have the Lord speak to me through his word, his scriptures. Every person needs to have a focus on the Lord. That's right, Tiffany. We should stay focused and not be distracted. That's right. Thank you, Sister Ways. Uh, we have to have a Christ-centered marriage. Uh, absolutely. Uh, Andrew Daniels, great to have you. Michelle Dillard, thank you for joining us. Kena, appreciate you for being so supportive. Uh, Noble's family, that's right. First seek the kingdom of God. So look at John chapter 2. We find this in the text here, uh, how that Christ, Jesus, was invited to the marriage. Even before you get married, have it in your mind and have a ritual, have a tradition, have a, a, a type of, it's good, it's healthy to build a ritual for your own personal Bible study, your own prayer life. Uh, it's important uh, that you do that before you even get married. And, and as you're seeking, as you're searching, uh, as you're waiting on God, you know, the Lord can set you up with someone that has a Christ-centered uh, focus uh, before you get married. And then as we, the marriage continues on, keep putting Christ in the marriage. Keep reminding one another of Jesus. I thank God my wife reminds me of the Lord, the Lord's word. Well, yeah, you, you're a preacher. You know the word. Yeah, I know uh, two or three scriptures, but, but it's important that she reminds me of what the Lord says. I remind her what the Lord says. And, and it goes around as a circle of love because Jesus is the center. He has to be the center. Now look at the, we can learn something about inviting Jesus to the marriage. That's our subject. John chapter two, verse one, the third day, there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee and the mother of Jesus was there and both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. Many invite Jesus to the ceremony, but we all need to invite Jesus to the matrimony. Look at John two and verse two. Jesus was invited to the marriage and his disciples. Now, if you're going to uh, invite to the many people during the ceremony in, uh, in my marriage counseling, my premarital counseling, uh, I'll give away one of my secrets. Sometimes I early on in the premarital counseling, I ask about the fact of whether or not the couple has a date set. And usually uh, you have to have a different strategy with a couple that already has a date set rather than a couple that does not have a date set. Uh, because sometimes there are couples that don't have a date set for the marriage, for the wedding, and there are some couples that do have a date set for the wedding. Sometimes those that have a date set for the wedding, uh, if one of them is not a Christian, they're, 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 it, it's, a, it's a difficult situation to work on. The first, Christians need to 
uh, married Christians. And when people have a date set, sometimes their mind is just focused on that wedding. Their mind is focused on really, uh, uh, it's not all the time, but I've been preaching 20 plus years. I've been counseling folks for 20 plus years. So, so you don't know who I'm talking about. Uh, but, uh, I've had some cases where that couple, all that they have on their mind is getting me to sign off on this wedding because they want to have this wedding in the church building and they want me to perform the wedding and, and they want me to sign off so they can get a big discount on the marriage license. And they're not listening to the scriptures we're talking about. And I'm trying to help them get Jesus in the, the marriage, uh, but their focus is on the wedding. That's a recipe for disaster. But then you have other couples that come in that say, hey, we don't have a date set. We needed to come to you and talk and pray and seek God's guidance. Now, that you are, you're in good shape when you start off with that mind. It's important, uh, or it's important that we have our focus on the Lord first, okay? Now, here we have in the text, Jesus was invited to the marriage. And his disciples were invited to the marriage. The disciples being invited to the marriage. Now, to, in our way of speaking, in our time, we need to invite the apostles' doctrine into the marriage. We need to invite the New Testament scriptures into the marriage. Today, you can't invite the physical disciples, Peter, James, and John, and Paul, uh, to your uh, marriage. But you can invite... Uh, the word of God. You can invite the scriptures. You can invite the word of God. We can read what Peter says. We can read what Paul said. We can read what uh, the apostle John said and uh, about the marriage, about the, the, the uh, wedding, about the entire matrimony and God will be pleased. Sanders family, God bless you. Love your family. Uh, 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 Jackson O'Neill family, we appreciate you. Hunter family, thank you. It's important that we invite Jesus into the marriage. John 2 verse 2, we, Jesus was invited and the disciples were invited. Watch this. Verse 3, when they, were, when they wanted wine, the mother uh, of Jesus said to them, they have no wine. Now, uh, we have to go back into what's called antiquity and learn some things because what something uh, means now is it may not be the exact same as what it meant then uh here in this today when someone says wine they're thinking about abc liquor store or or um you know uh what are some other uh liquor stores that y'all go to uh just just what well, no no don't answer that don't answer that don't don't answer that but but uh at that time their focus was more on uh well let, let's look at it now the the wine in the scriptures, especially here in John 2, you can find that it's, there's wine that's not fermented. There's wine that is fermented. Uh, but in the ancient world, uh, to quench your thirst, uh, this was to quench your thirst without drunkenness. Uh, wine was diluted with water uh, between one third and one tenth of its strength due to the climate and, the, and circumstances. Even new wine fermented quickly and had an inebriating effect if it was not mixed. Uh, because of the lack of water purification process, wine mixed with water was also safe to drink, uh, sometimes in water alone. There was a, a cleansing of the water sometimes. Uh, now, the Bible actually condemns drunkenness, but uh, this phrase here, when it talks about wine, it's not talking about drunkenness. It's not talking about getting drunk, because our Lord Jesus would not make a wine to get someone drunk because that would be in violation of Proverbs chapter 20 and verse number one and Psalms 104 verse 15 uh, among some other scriptures in Proverbs chapter 26. Jesus would not make wine that would cause people to be drunk. So when you read uh, that they were out of wine, uh, don't just think of you know, alcohol that they were trying. Don't just think of like people would do today. Just try to get drunk. No, uh, from this text, from this scripture, uh, the wine that's not fermented, the wine that is not to induce drunkenness at a wedding 
is an indication of joy. It's an indication of joy, okay? It, it, we're talking about antiquity. We're talking about culture. We're, we live in a 20th century, 21st century uh, Western culture. They live in a 1st century Eastern culture. Uh, so, so, you gotta, so we got to understand the context, who's talking, who they're talking to, what are they talking about, what dispensation, what context, all right, and, and put it all together. And I'm here to tell you, Jesus made wine at this wedding. But he didn't make the wine that you can buy out of the liquor store at this wedding. He made wine that was that was not in, uh, in that was not made to get someone drunk. But what it gives the idea of is joy. Okay, it gives joy. This is a wedding, a wedding without the joy of God. Okay, without the joy of God before Jesus shows up on the scene. Uh, thank you, Webb family. God bless you, McAfee, my my friend. Great to see you. Great to have you. Tompkins family. Thank you. Nobles family. That's right. We have to be sober minded. The Bible tells us minded. It gives the idea of having all of our senses available to us. Uh, and that, that could be inferred as well. Now, John 2, verse number 3. When they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have they have no wine. That was very uh that was very embarrassing. Uh, in that situation, in that culture, very embarrassing. And this just this is just a picture of uh, this is a picture of what a marriage is like when Jesus is not at the center. Okay, this is a marriage. This is a marriage. What a marriage is like when Jesus is with, without Jesus. He's given us hints and clues and pictures and metaphors and allegories of what your marriage would be like without Jesus. You can have the, the, the most attractive wife. You can have the most handsome husband. You all can have money. You can have a big house. But if you don't have Jesus, you don't have joy. When you don't have Jesus, you don't have joy. Oh, my goodness. Uh, you may be saying, well, you know, they're movie stars that get married. They have a lot of stuff, but I'm here to tell you. Uh, some people who, uh, some famous people, rich people can have Jesus. Poor people can have Jesus. People in the middle can have Jesus. And sometimes uh, rich people can be without Jesus. Poor people can be without Jesus in the middle. They can be without Jesus. So, so we have to be, uh, we have to have Jesus in the midst of the relationship. They ran out of wine. Without Jesus, whatever ceremony you have, whatever honeymoon stage you have in your marriage, you will run out of joy. That's what the idea is. Uh, thank you. Hashtag that. No Jesus, no joy. I can count on my sweetheart, Anisha Jackson. Hashtag that. No Jesus, no joy. N-O Jesus, N-O joy. And, and N-O-W, Jesus, K-N-O-W, joy. Uh, so, so it's important uh, that we have Jesus at the wedding. Mary says they have no wine. They ran out of joy. They are embarrassed. But then verse 4, woman, what do I have to do with you? My hour is not yet come. Uh, that is a, a Christological, Christological uh, in statement talking about his death on the cross, he would provide wine for the church. He would provide wine, uh, the, the bread and the cup at his death on the cross, Matthew 26, 26 to 36, uh, and uh, 1 Corinthians 11, 23 through 29. Jesus will provide some wine, unfermented again, unfermented wine. He will provide it when he dies on the tree of the cross. But, but um, now, John 2 and 5, his mother said to the servants, Whatsoever he tells you to do, that's what you do. Husbands and wives, whatever Jesus tells you to do, that's what you do. Uh, somebody get, uh, got mad with me one time because they tried to come up with all the excuses in the world why they need to just give up on the husband. And I wouldn't go for it. No, I'd say, what, G what did Jesus say? They got tired of me saying what Jesus said. Oh, my goodness. Stop talking about the Bible. Stop talking about Jesus. Hey, you came to me. If you, you know, to to a hammer, everything looks like a nail. When you come, when you talk to uh, uh talk to a hammer, hammer's ready to hammer anything. When you talk to uh, you know, an NBA basketball player, they they view the world in the in the in the scope of that sport. When you talk to a gospel preacher, man, now all I've got is the word of God for you. That's all I have. Uh, I don't have uh, the world stuff, but. Jesus, uh, Mary said, whatever he tells you to do, you do it. 
Wives, whatever Jesus tells you to do, you do it. Husbands, whatever Jesus tells you to do, you do it. Uh, now look at how this is a wedding. Uh, my goodness, they might have, uh, many people spend 10, 20, 30,000 more, more than that on the wedding. Hey, whatever you want to spend on your wedding, that's your business. But I'm here to tell you, don't just spend so much time focused on the ceremony. You need to get some guidance for the matrimony. And many people need counseling after they get married. After you come down off the high, after you had a great uh, uh, wedding and a great reception and done your dance and tried to put it on social media to go viral and all that stuff, and you're going on your trip and come back from your trip, uh, and some people need some counseling after that because the marriage is for a lifetime. And it's important that we get the counseling and the help that we need for a lifetime. Now, Mary said, whatever he tells you to do, you do it. That's what we should do, husbands and wives. They ran out of wine. They were embarrassed. This was an embarrassing situation. Uh, and and there now it's important. Uh, now there were, John 2, verse 6, there were six water pots of stone. And uh, they had them after the purification of the Jews, containing two or three Firkins of peace. Now there were water pots of stone. Now Jesus said to them, fill the water pots with water and they filled them up to the brim. Uh, Jesus can fix your relationship, but there's some things you have to do too. It's a collaborative effort. We should work together. We should work. Jesus is going to do his part, but we've got to do our part. Fill it up. Fill up your household with the word of God. Fill up yourself. Uh, with obeying God. There's something you need to do. Many people, well, my spouse need to do this. They need to change. They need to, what, isn't there something that you can do to improve things? Uh, fill up the water pots with water. They fill them up to the brim. And he said, draw out now and bear to the governor of the feast. And they bear it. And when the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine, somewhere between the pouring in and the pouring out, Jesus turned that water into wine. John 2 and verse number 9, when the ruler of the feast tasted the water that was made wine, and he didn't know where it came from, but the servants which drew the water knew where it came from. The governor called the bridegroom and said, everyone at the beginning set forth the good wine. And then afterwards, when people... Uh, have drunk now he, he when they have drunk a lot when they drink a lot then they put out the wine which is worse but you have kept the good wine until now jesus can give you the best wine jesus can give you the best wine that which is unfermented unfermented wine uh jesus gives you the best wine that doesn't intoxicate your body but Jesus can give you a spiritual high in your soul that can last forever. And Jesus, um, Jesus high doesn't get you. Uh, it doesn't come with a hangover. It doesn't come with with uh, all these withdrawal symptoms. It doesn't destroy the body. It doesn't destroy your mind. But it feeds your spirit, feeds your heart, your body, and your soul. John two eleven. This is the beginning of miracles Jesus did in Cana of Galilee. And manifested forth his glory, and his disciples believed on him. The beginning of miracles. Jesus, first miracle, he did it in the context of marriage. Why? I believe he wanted us to know that we need to invite Jesus into the marriage. We need to invite Jesus into the marriage. Thank you, uh, Sister Hunter. Hashtag that. Fill, fill up your marriage with Jesus. Fill up your marriage with Jesus. Not the intoxicating wine. Not getting drunk, not getting high, not with uh, uh, wild worldly parties and, and cheating on your spouse or pornography or, or gambling or lying or deceiving one another or yelling, screaming, fussing and fighting. That's the devil's work. But fill up your marriage with Jesus. Fill up the, the empty pots. There was empty pots. He said, fill them up with water. I'll put the wine within the water. I'll put it in there uh, and fill it up with Jesus. Some who came to our, uh, my wife and I wedding, uh, May 3rd, 1997, uh, and they came to the reception and they saw some big, uh, some big bottles and they were ready to pop some bottles. My goodness, some of my relatives and, and um, certainly, you know, uh, they were ready to pop some bottles and get drunk. But we had some bottles like this 
They got all excited. They got all excited. Oh, my good boy. Whew, we about to get it on. We about to get our drink on. But if you notice, we had some. We had these bottles like this. But if you notice, it says non-alcoholic. When they saw that phrase, non-alcoholic, some of my cousins and my uncles, but they got they got upset. Oh no, boy, we should have known nephew wasn't gonna have the alcohol. No sir, no ma'am. This is more so the type of the wine that Jesus gave, gave at the non-alcoholic, non-intoxicating. But the real, the real, uh, the best gift. The best drink at that wedding was Jesus himself. The best drink, the best feature, the best gift at the wedding was Jesus himself. He will not give you alcoholic drink. He'll give you something that's better than uh, alcoholic drink. And, and he'll give you himself. Invite Jesus into the marriage. What have we learned today? That Jesus invited to the marriage in John 2 you need to invite him into your marriage we learned that his disciples were invited to the marriage you need to invite the apostles doctrine the, the new testament into your marriage Mary said whatever he tells you to do you need to do it saints we need to do whatever he tells us to do husbands wives do whatever Jesus tells you to do fill up the water pots with water fill up your mind with the word of God and Jesus will add the flavor. Jesus will add um, the extra oomph you need to keep God's word first place in your life. We said before on the previous broadcast that when you face trials and tribulations, the devil will try to make you think that he's burying you, but you got to tell that devil, devil, you're not burying me. God is planting me. That's a whole different thing. A burial, much different than a planting. Devil, you can't bury me. God is planting me so that I can rise again to be something greater than I was before. Invite Jesus into the marriage. Regardless of how your husband's acting, your wife is acting, invite Jesus into the marriage. That that governor of the feast. And my goodness, that usually they have the best stuff. Meaning, uh, uh, sometimes, you know, at some weddings, some weddings, they might have had some intoxicating drink. But that governor said, this that Jesus served. He didn't know it was Jesus, but it was Jesus that served it. This wine that Jesus served, non-alcoholic, was much better than the alcoholic drink. Why? Because Jesus is the gift. The source of all blessings come from Jesus. We encourage you, we admonish you, husbands, love your wives. Wives, love your husbands. Uh, give each other the love, respect, and encouragement that you need and invite Jesus into the marriage. Remember, uh, 3 p.m. today, uh, I'm sorry, 2 p.m. today, 2 p.m. today, we'll have our single adults uh, virtual Bible study. And then 3 p.m., we will have our virtual uh, uh, class of 2020 virtual baccalaureate. It's going to be really good. Uh, both will be on Facebook Live that join us Sunday, 8 a.m. worship, uh, mass worship, of course. Uh, we're opening the services back up, but we're taking all the necessary CDC precautions, uh, and we have a list of, of a list of uh, the rules and regulations on our nscocjacks.com website uh, right at the beginning. Of course, social distancing, masks, gloves, uh, hand washing, distance, uh, show love one for another. And if you're not able, join us virtually tomorrow if you're not able to come join us virtually facebook live on youtube live 8 a.m worship and then facebook live youtube live 10 a.m bible study and our services right now all for all the month of june are, are casual dress casual dress and as we said today 2 p.m single adult bible study on facebook live 3 p.m baccalaureate service for our graduates we can't wait and then uh, remember tomorrow, 11.30 a.m. for the class of 2020. We're going to have a parade outside of the building uh, for all of our graduates. You can drive up, drive through, and decorate your cards, bring your cards, your gifts, uh, bring some money, and give to the graduates. And let's show them how much we support them. God bless you. Thank you. See you soon.